one. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the select board meeting for April 21st, 2021. On March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law that allow public bodies to use remote platforms such as Zoom, which is the platform this board uses. Um, the executive uh, order also uh, allows us to um, use Zoom so that we don't have to physically be in the same space um, and that residents are also safe. And uh, people can also call in. You do not have to have a computer. You can call in by phone. That information is on the public meeting notice. And also the channels to follow on cable TV are on that public meeting notice. And you can stream live from the Milton Cable Access TV website as well. Thank you very much. Uh, our first agenda item is um, an update uh, on uh, the agenda item from last meeting, um, a grant of $5,000 from the Master Plan Implementation Committee to the Parks and Recreation Department to act as the fiscal, fiscal agent for a one year uh, term pilot of the farmer's market. Um, as we discussed at the last meeting, the farmer's market um, was not in operation last year because of COVID and vendors were not uh, coming in person. And uh, therefore, you know, we find uh, that the farmer's market has some, um, some catching up to do to get vendors back and um, new board members, things, things of that nature. Um, in discussing this with, um, with town council in the past week, uh, he contacted the Division of Local Services to check and see if the town could assist a private organization or a company nonprofit in this case in this way, and it is not allowed. Um, there are other models that, that could be used. Several towns actually have their own farmer's market, so they have a staff person much uh, as the, um, the parks department pays for a staff person for the youth center, which we can't wait until it's up and running again. Um, but uh, so those things are, those things are, are um, allowed if, you, if the town is actually um, hiring someone and managing it but we're not allowed to give a grant to someone. And um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone has questions, I might be able to answer them. I, I also then followed up with Jean Boylan, who is, um, has moved out of town, but is, is, is uh, working with Scott McKay um, from the parks commissioners to um, get this back up and running. And I, I let him know but they've also been talking to the Chamber of Commerce. I also spoke with the Chamber of Commerce myself and um, Representative Driscoll just to see um, if, if there were um, uh, things that, that they could do. But the board isn't able to advocate for the farmer's market because it is a private entity. Um, I just connected everybody and Gene uh, said that he and Scott are confident that this will go forward. And um, there's some fundraising to do, but uh, that, that they do have an alternative plan that they're working with. Mr. Doyle? Um, Melinda, quick question. Do you want me to let Cheryl know? That would probably be a good idea. Okay. Um, I, I, I think I did reach out to her um, last week, but... That, that, that would be great, Arthur, if you would follow up. I've emailed so many people about this, I can't quite remember who I've contacted. Sorry, I should keep a list. Um, Mr. Zulis? So, so it's, it seems to me, you know, uh, we don't want to lose the farmer's market. Uh, if there are private, um, uh, private opportunities, private sources to do so, I think that would be fine. But uh, as I think you suggested, an alternative model could well be uh, the same model that we have for the youth center, uh, hiring someone to operate. In that, in that instance, we hire someone to operate a, a, um, a center and it seems to me that model may work here if, 
if as a fail safe, if need be, if we don't have some kind of a private, privately run operation. Um, well, Mr. Zerwinski and um, Ms. Quinn of the planning department have have been working um, with the, 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 the group and um, Mr. Boylan said that uh, that Scott McKay would keep in touch um, and we could keep tabs on it to see if maybe there does need to be some alternative plan because it is, in the words of Mr. Zawinski, it's a cultural and, and civic um, feature of our community that's just so important. Um, and not just to us, actually, it's to our neighbors across the river too, um, which brings us together. And, uh, and it's not just about food, which Mr. Dennehy has said, um, it, it's, about, it's about other aspects of our community that are important. So um, I, I know our, our, our third item also related to the farmer's market. And I just wanted to give us some running room if we felt as if we needed to, because uh, I didn't know what the rest of the conversations would, would um, uh, uh, mean as, as they continued over the weekend. And uh, at this point, I'm, I'm not sure that there's follow-up action, but if the board would like some follow-up action, I, I think we can talk about it. When does it need to be open? When when I, I can't remember what the what the first date usually is. Um, it's it's I think the first date is in June. So they yeah. would be looking to hire somebody around May first, okay. and um, the uh, the Chamber of Commerce for Milton and Quincy they've they've really become great partners, and Quincy also has some. Um, rebuilding to do after COVID for its farmer's market. So I think there's, there's some synergy there that, that everybody's looking into. Um, and uh, I, I, I think that the, they'll be able to get up and running by then. Um, it's just a matter of working quickly. So it sounds like, uh, oh, go ahead, Arthur, sorry. Yes, Mr. Doyle. Uh, a question, Madam Chid. Uh, you mentioned across the river and being OFD, like so many people in Milton are, um, do we know if Dorchester has a uh, farmer's market? Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I wouldn't be I, surprised if they do, but I don't know. I, you know, I know that there are a number of farmers markets in Boston because I've I've been to a couple, but I would be hard pressed to say where where the locations are now. You know, I know that I've been I, I and there there are also um, sort of some things that are like farmers market, but they're more like cooperatives. Um, so why do you ask? I don't want to go too far out on a limb in the thinking, but you're mentioning Milton and Quincy mm -hmm. as a a collaborative possibility strikes a resident note and it would be great if maybe we had uh, two farmers markets, one which would be Milton Quincy and another one Milton Dorchester. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Dennehy. There, there was one on Thursday nights in Peabody Square that would abut the property at uh, Ashmont Tea Station. Mm -hmm. Great. Which, which isn't too far away. No. no. Okay. Okay. Madam Chair, thank you for all the follow-up. I know you've been doing a lot of the follow-up on this. So um, I think we're in good hands with, with Jean Boylan and Scott McKay and others who are Chamber of Commerce members who are looking to make this work for this season. It is a great community benefit. And um, it, you know, maybe they can get back to us if there's something within the, the parameters of the law that we can do in our capacity. But otherwise, um, it sounds like this is something that the Mem different members of the community might be able to rescue and, and pull together. Right. Um, absolutely. Uh, right. We can keep in touch, see if something develops that, you know, we can legally do. And, uh, and, and at the same time, uh, you're right. I think it's in good hands. So thank you. Um, great. So item number four is um, a letter of support for Milton Public Schools Community Project funding request for Lexia Core 5 and iReady Reading and Math Instruction programs. Um, so the um, 
Congress it has re replaced, um, or I, I should say largely replaced, I don't know if it's completely replaced, the system of earmarks with the, a grant-based system, at least for this year, I feel as if this is kind of a po pilot project. And um, uh, Representative Presley's um, office, I think we got something from um, Representative Lynch's office as well, but, um, but Mr. Dennehy and I, met with um, Representative Presley's staff and, um, and they, they walked us through uh, the program and, um, and the kinds of things that our community could apply for. And Mr. Dennehy probably has uh, more detail that he could add, but um, we uh, filed a couple of applications and um, one for the Milton Public Schools, which is uh, what we're writing this letter of support for. Um, really was uh, uh, qualified and um, they're asking $416,000 in funding under the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Innovation and Improvement Program to pay license fees for when you're access to the ins assessment and instructionally adaptive tools um, for math and, um, and reading. And I had read through some of the application and um, the teachers have been finding this really effective in tracking um, students' progress and also their needs. So um, this is just a, a wonderful opportunity. And um, I, I'm very grateful that, that uh, Congresswoman Presley uh, saved a spot for for each one of her communities, um, so that we can have some benefit. And uh, and they, but they further uh, um, have uh, directed uh, the transportation a project um, that we put an application in for uh, to the uh, transportation grant uh, that we really you know would have been hard for us to know about without them really being with us. Um, and, uh, and that's for designed for that, that Squantum Adams uh, uh, area that we had a presentation on earlier in the, in the year, but didn't have design funds for yet. So Mr. Dennehy, is there anything else? No, I, th I think you summed it up well, uh, Madam Chair. Just wanna thank both of our congressional delegates, um, bo both uh, Congresswoman Presley's office and uh, Congressman Lynch's office has been in full contact with us, oh, walking great. us through the, pro the process. Um, and, and actually uh, Congressman Lynch's office is directing us that Public Works Project to a transportation infrastructure, infrastructure bill, uh, which will be coming up. It didn't quite qualify for the CPF funding because it, it touches multiple uh, fiscal years. So what they're looking to do is, is fund projects um, for the CPF uh, for fiscal 22, which which is where this uh, Milton Public Schools uh, process and application qualifies. Uh, they do ask for letters of support. MPS reached out and was wondering if the select board would would um, authorize a letter of support. So that that's why we're here tonight. Um, and uh, it's it's a it's a great story. And and both both of our uh, fed, federal delegates uh, in in the House of Reps should be commended for their, their reaching out to us, very proactive on, the, on their behalf, continuing to keep the dialogue open as these projects and, and funds become available to communities. Oh, that's great, thank you. I, since I, I haven't had any contact with uh, Congressman Lynch's office, so that's, uh, that's appreciated, absolutely. Um, so may, may I uh, have a motion to accept the, uh, the letter. Madam Chair, I'll move that we approve the letter of support for Milton Public Schools Community Project funding request for Lexia Core 5 and iReady reading and math instruction programs. Second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, Ms. Conlon? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mr. Zoulis? Yes. Ms. Collins, yes. That's great. Thank you. It's very exciting. Um, um, oh, hello, Mr. Freitag, town council has joined us. Um, at this time, uh, I move to enter executive session uh, pursuant to MDL chapter 30A, section 21A6 to consider the purchase exchange lease or value of real property 
jeopardy, as I believe that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the select board, um, specifically with regard to uh, 101 Blue Hills Parkway. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, Ms. Conlon? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mr. Zoulis? Yes. Ms. Collins, yes. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good health. I think we have Sean with us. Sean, we're ready for executive session. Apologies, I was doing BOA as well. Okay, uh, going into executive session. Okay, so um, please commence. Ready? We're not recording. Don't we need to record it? Uh, actually, once we get through that on the 12th, uh, just, uh, just I am recording on the other end, if you wouldn't mind. This is a little okay. Off. All right. You. Apologies, everyone, for having to do this again. Um, I move to enter executive session pursuant to MGL chapter 30A, section 21, section A, subsection six, to consider the purchase exchange lease or value of real property, uh, believing that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect mm -hmm. on the negotiating position of the select board, uh, specifically with regard to um, 101 Blue Hills Parkway. And we will adjourn from executive session not to return to open session. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, Ms. Conlon? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mr. Zoulis? You're muted. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Collins, yes. Thank, thank you. you. And good night, everyone. And, and thank you very much.